Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, we are back to the discussion on comic studies and most importantly the course is designed as decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. So, here we are in lecture 3, in lecture 1 we generally talked about what comic is, how to define the comics and in the second lecture importantly we looked at the book called uh, comics and sequential art by Eisner and what are the important feature of the book and how the each and every chapter has contributed in the development of comic studies and most importantly how are we going to understand the discourse of a comics. So, here today in lecture 3 what we are going to talk about is Scott McCloud's book called understanding comics. The reason why we are supposed to read uh, the book of uh, Scott McCloud is because he is a very prominent and seminal figure in the comic studies who is known for his important book Understanding Comics, a seminal work in the field of comic studies published in 1993. It explores the unique qualities of comics as a medium and offers insight into how comic work. So, MacLeod's approach to comics is a formalist, meaning that he focuses on the formal elements of the medium such as panels, gutters and word balloons rather than the content of individual comics. MacLeod's work has been influential in the field of comic studies and has been used in academic courses and discussions. He has also written other books about comics including Reinventing Comics that you can see on the slide and Making Comics. In addition to his work as a writer, MacLeod is also a cartoonist and has created his own comics such as Zot and The Sculptor. Zot came in 1990 and The Sculptor came in 2015. His work has been critiqued by some scholars who argue that his formalist approach overlooks the social and cultural context in which comics are created and consumed. Despite these critiques, MacLeod's work remains an important contribution to the study of comics and has been helped to shape the field in significant ways. So, what interestingly we see in his book called Understanding Comics and why it is significant in the field of comic studies for a particular reason that the way he has approached comics. So, as far as what we saw that content is also important, but what MacLeod does for him forms are more important, which means let me give you an example with the help of literature and I am sure that that will convey a lot of sense. I am sure that you are familiar with the term called formalism, which uh, was brought by many people let us say for example, Richardson, William Tate, Impson, Wimsot and Birdsley. So, what they do for them form is more important right, they, they are not concerned about the content, what they are concerned about that how are we going to use the language when we are writing a poetry. So, for them they are more concerned about tension, they are more concerned about foregrounding something that is in the background, that is was a quite I would say that a revolutionary step taken by formalist and I am sure that you know it is started with Russian formalist Michel uh, Boschino and other people let us say Victor Sklowski and others. So, the point what I want to bring here that either we critique or we do not critique that is a different case, but can we ignore the contribution made by formalist in reading the literature or poetry? The answer is no, his contribution is their contribution is really significant and we must look at what formalism is. 
In the same way, what McCloud is doing in comics, he is also concerned about how are we going to read comics, not looking at the content that what is the theme is, how it is related with the socio-cultural perspectives, but rather how are we going to approach the very form in which comics is written. So, therefore, looking from that angle, McCloud's book is extremely significant understanding comics and therefore, as a student of literature when we are approaching comic studies, it is our job not to ignore two important people. One was Eisner whom we already looked at and second one is James Cloud. So, as you could see and I showed you in the previous slide that he has not only critiqued or he has not only talked about comics, but he has also written comics. So, Zot and the sculptor two of his important work, I would recommend you all that you go and please read without proceeding further. So, here what I am going to do first, I am going to talk about his each chapters, what he has talked about and later on I will pick up one by one and we will discuss in details. All right. So, moving to the slides, understanding comics, what it does first. Understanding comic is divided into 9 chapters, each of which explore a different aspect of a comics. Chapter 1, setting the record straight, begins with a discussion of the history of a comics and the various misconceptions that people have about the medium. As I already told you that we are going to look at medium that is more important. McClouds argues that comics are not a genre, but a medium that can be used to tell stories in a variety of genres. In chapter 2, what we will interestingly find is titled as the vocabulary of comics. This chapter introduces the reader to the basic elements of comics including panels, gutters and word balloons. McCloud explains how these element work together to create meaning and tells the reader how to read comics. Next chapter titled as blood in the gutter, it explores the concept of a closer, which is the process by which reader fills in the gaps between panels to create a sense of a time and a space. McCloud argues that closer is what makes comics unique as a storytelling medium. Next chapter titled as a time frames, it dwells deeper into the concept of a time in comics. McCloud explains how the use of different panel sizes and shapes can create different sense of a time and how the placement of a panels on the page can affect the readers experience of a time. Moving to the next chapter that is a living in line discusses the use of line in comics. McLeod explains how different types of lines can convey different emotions and how the use of line can affect the readers perceptions of the characters and the story. Chapter 6 titled as show and tell explores the use of words and picture in comics. McCloud argues that comics are a unique medium because they can combine the visual and the verbal in ways that other media cannot. Moving to chapter number 7, where he is talking about the 6 steps that outlines the process of creating a comic from the initial idea to the finished product. McCloud explains how each step in the process affects the final product and offers advice to aspiring comic creators. Chapter number 8, a word about color that discusses the use of color in comics. McCloud explains how color can affect the reader's perception of the story and how different color schemes can be used to create different moods. And here we have the last chapter of this book, Understanding Comics that came in 1993. Chapter number 9 titled as The Invisible Art concludes the book with a discussion of the role of the reader in creating meaning in comics. McCloud argues that 
comics are a collaborative medium with the readers playing an active role in the creation of a meaning. Overall, understanding comics is a comprehensive and insightful explanation of the medium of comics. It has had a significant impact on the field of comic studies and has influenced generation of a comic creators. So, these are the chapters that we notice in book called understanding comics that came in 1993. Why it is important to remember the publication time is significant because this publication time is significant because we can see that what happened after this book came out which means when the understanding comics got published how it shaped the comic artist and the comic audience or readers views about the comics how people started looking and reading the comics after this book came out because after book comes out it also hints us it tells you that so far we have been ignoring we have not been uh, looking certain important perspectives something was overlooked. So, let us say for example, before formalist I am sure that you recall before formalist came into the picture in the literature what we have been doing we have been looking at every literature as a product of a society in such a way that it reflects the society which is obviously wrong assumptions by keeping in the mind the idea of literature. So, what happened when the formalist came then he said that hey look literature is not something that through, through which you will see the society literature in itself is significant because the way language is used the language we use in poetry the same language we do not use in newspaper in articles or in some other things therefore metaphor simile figure of a speech lot of experiments that we do is not possible in other piece of writing in the same way comic is also unique in itself. It has its own language, it has its own grammar, it has its own vocabularies. We cannot read and understand until and unless we know the grammar of a comics. We are familiar with the vocabularies of comics. Therefore, Bill Asner's book Comics and Sequential Art and Understanding Comics by MacLeod is very significant to understand these vocabularies and grammar. So, if you look at all the chapter that I discussed I mean what I am going to discuss in detail, but briefly what I talked about what each chapter is about if you see this they all are going to focus on the form of the comics they are not going to concern that what kind of a theme you are supposed to write no they are not concerned about it they are more concerned about that how are you going to write it is not about what it is more about how. So, that is a difference we are supposed to keep in the mind when we are approaching comics. All right, so what I am going to do now we are going to pick up each chapters and you will see how interesting these chapters are and later on when it intrigues you you can read in details. So, moving to the next slides that is a chapter number 1 titled as uh, setting the record straight. In this chapter MacLeod begins by discussing the history of a comics and the various misconception that people have about the medium right. So, here you see interestingly that he is going to speak about he is going to speak about that certain misconception that we had before we approach the comics which means that let me have a question I am sure that you will reflect on it that when we see the caricature or when we see the different color on the page it seems for us that it is for children right. So, which means that people did not understand the kind of art that was over poured in writing comics. People looked at it that is a colorful there are a lot of uh, jokes around or caricature around. So, which is why it belongs to it belongs to children, but that is a misconception about the medium concerning comics and which is why MacLeod for in the first chapter he is discussing the history of a comics and the same time certain misconception that is attached with comics and its medium. So, what he argues what is the argument that he makes look at the sl second slide he is arguing that comics are not a genre, but it is a medium that can be used to tell stories in 
variety of genres, right. So, first thing that he dismantles very categorically in his book that comics are not a genre, right. So, you can make a note of it that people like MacLeod, who is uh, who is very much renowned figure in the field of comic studies, he is saying that comics are not a genre, but what it is? It is a medium, which means that if you have to tell a story, you can use comics as a medium to tell a story, all right. So, that is a first assumption was broken by MacLeod in the first chapter setting the record. So, let me move to the second slides. Here you see that, uh, uh, that when he is talking about, he is also illustrating his point by providing a brief history of a comics. What he does? He traces the origin back to prehistoric cave paintings and Egyptian hieroglyphs, the Bayox tapestry, right. I am deliberately showing this pic, so that you can relate. You look at this, this is a Egyptian hieroglyphs, right. And you see the history goes back uh, almost uh, a thousand years before, right. It is more re related to, let me write it for you, prehistoric cave paintings, right. So, this is, this is, you can relate the time period. So, this is Egyptian hieroglyphs that you see and then we have the Bayox tapestry, right. So, then also we have a Greek paintings, right. If you see these things and also let me uh, show you one more that is called Japanese scrolls, right. So, if you see all these slides, these all are almost colorful, there are different mediums are used to tell some story right, but it is somewhere also concerned with the comics, right. So, he also discusses the development of a comic in the United States. So, here it comes to the development of United States that is from the early newspaper strips of the 19th century to the superhero of the comics, the superhero comics of the 20th century. So, what I want to suggest over here that as I discussed in detail in the previous lecture, in the first and second lecture that when we are going to look at, when we are going to understand these comics initially what used to happen? It was never in a book form, right. It was always in a strips, right. And later on when we switch to what we see in the America that action comics, detective comics, Captain America, all star came into the picture, right. So, here you see these are the strips, right these are the strips and now after a point of time we see full comic book, right. So, here interestingly you look at the transition what I am basically talking about through the book called understanding comics in the first chapter setting the record I am talking about the transition there is the this is a transition from here to here initially it was coming in the strips now you see it is in the book form. So, MacLeod also addresses some of the common misconception about comics. So, here what uh, MacLeod is doing in his book is simply trying to suggest that comics was always look at lower form of entertainment. I do not want to go into the politics of the way something is created as a low form of entertainment or bigger form of entertainment, but one thing I would like to ask you to reflect upon because that is a very a million dollar question that I would ask you to think when you go home is simply this that how are we going to see or understand something as a form of entertainment. Let me put it this way what entertains you right. When you feel like entertaining yourself what you do and why is it so that when you are reading something or doing something is considered as a not appropriate form of entertainment, which means that this is not legitimized by the society to be understood as an entertainment. So, therefore, you are prohibited to use that form of entertainment. Let me uh, give an example. When I was in my childhood age and I remember there was a 
uh, Nagraj comics and Dhruv comics was available in my school days and to my to your surprise I am sure that you must be knowing also you can think that if you do not know to your surprise that we were never allowed to read these comics in public domain right. So, what we used to do we used to put these comics inside the box and when the teacher is not available the parents are not around then we used to read this. So, the kind of entertainment that we developed the reason what I am asking is why is it so that we as a child were not allowed to read this kind of a comics because people thought it is a lower form of entertainment. So, the reason is that that is why we should read comics right we should read comics to know that it can speak something which is not allowed in the society. I will talk more in detail various form of entertainment all as a various form of storytelling which also I highlighted in the last class. However, what I am trying to suggest here that we see the shift that is happening right initially that it used to come as a strip, but now it is coming as a comic book. So, even in America we have detective comics captain america and all star like comics which you know and they are very uh, uh, they are very uh, popular in fact so this is the shift and transition that i wanted you to bring the notice now moving to the next slides what you see here in the chapter 1 that he is also uh, uh, using diagram to explain the basic elements of comics such as pa uh, panels gutters and uh, word balloons right. So, what is arguing that comics are a legitimate art form that can be used to tell complex and sophisticated stories. So, it is not only limited to lower form of entertainment, but it is also a legitimate art form that can be used to tell complex look at this complex and sophisticated stories right. So, so far what we have been uh, uh, un, what we have been thinking of comics as it is a very uh, degrading form of art, but that is not true right. So, so, if we have to tell something complex and sophisticated stories we can use this. So, throughout the chapter what McLeod uses illustration to demonstrate his points. He provide examples of a different uh, types of comics from superhero comics to underground comics and shows how they use the medium in different ways. He also uses diagram to explain the basic elements of a comic such as panels, gutters and word balloons. So, overall what we see in the chapter number 1 of understanding comics it sets the stage for the rest of the book by providing a historical and cultural context for the medium. It challenges common misconception about comics and argues for their legitimacy as an art form. The use of illustration and diagram helps to make the concept accessible and easy to understand. So, here I want to also bring a one uh, beautiful example and I am sure that as a student of literature or humanities and social science you can relate. See initially I am sure that if you go uh, 50 years before you will see that comics were not popular, comics were not read by people right. And as uh, McLeod rightly said that we can use comics to tell complex storytelling right or when we want to make uh, you want to say something sophisticated stories or whatever form of stories you can use comics. So, think for a second in the market or in the publication house you will see that all the important and difficult books are available also in the comic forms what I mean by is this you think of a Kant, you think of a Hedger, you think of a Foucault, you think of a Marx these all books are available I mean understanding uh, Foucault or introducing uh, Hegel they all are available in comic form. So, that the student like us who are having difficulty in breaking the concepts related with Laka, Freud, Hegel, Heidegger, we can first read these books. It is explained to us very beautifully. What is the second reason? Most of us are very frightened to approach philosophy or to important concepts and ideas. 
So, what does this medium do to us, right? This through this medium, we can approach these concepts and it is presented in a such a beautiful way that we will not even get bored. It will remain like it will keep our interest, we will it will create a curiosity to know more about this person. So, what McLeod says that understanding comics in the chapter 1 that this medium is really helpful even to tell very complex and sophisticated stories. So, here is the example that when you want to say something, when you want to convey something, you can take this help of a comics and people will love it. And this is exactly what happens even in my classrooms when I see my students are struggling with important concepts or important thinkers, I introduce these kind of a books which are available in the comics form. I am not saying exactly the comics, but I am saying the medium that uh, comic uh, permits or in the uh, comic form it is available. And when students read, in fact, myself, I do not feel same to say that even I have gone through these comics and I find it really intriguing, interesting and bewildering at the same time that how beautifully they are presented in the comic medium. So, so dear students, it establishes the very fact that comics are important medium through which we can tell very complex and sophisticated stories. So, this is the chapter 1 of a MacLeod. Now, we are going to move the next slide which talks about chapter 2 is this. Chapter 2 of understanding comics is titled the vocabulary of comics. In this chapter, MacLeod introduces the reader to the basic elements of a comics and explains how they work together to create meaning. He begins by introducing the concept of vocabularies and explaining how it applies to comics. He also argues that comics have a unique vocabulary that includes elements such as panels, gutters and word balloons. Panels are the basic building blocks of a comics and they can be used to create a sense of a time and a space. So, there are uh, different types of a panel, right? And what are we are going to do one by one? We are going to look at that what is the types of a panel and what is the different types of panels are available. So, let us look at the first panel that is uh, called the moment to moment panel which requires little closer. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to look at each different types of a panel and we will see that how as an audience or as a reader of a comics, we should read these panels and the stories interwoven through these panels. So, let us look at the first panel that is moment to moment panel. Here, what it requires little transition. Let me show you the slide. Here you see on the slide moment to moment that requires little transition is on the slide, if you see, there are three uh, different comic strips, right? So, as the moment to moment talks about, it requires little transition, right? So, here you see, look at these are two girls, look at the closely, otherwise you will not understand. So, look at this two panel, right? This is a one and this is the two. Here you see, there is a girl and here also you see, there is a another, there is a same girl in fact, right? Now, what is the change? What is the difference that you notice in these two panel, right? So, let us say for example, I am sure that uh, in the childhood days, uh, I do not know whether you have played this game or not. I have played this game that find out the 10 differences between two pictures. So, the pictures looks almost the same, but there are almost certain minute differences. So, in the same way here you see, so only little transition has been made from one panel to another. The difference is that in the first pic, you see the girl's eyes are open, right? The girl eyes are open. The girl's eyes are open. In the second, you see that it is closed. So, here you see it is open, here you see it is closed. So, here you see from moving one panel to another, the only thing that we notice that, that there is a only slight 
story has moved very slow, which means the first her eyes are open and in this her eyes are closed. In the same way, now look at the second slide, that is interesting. What is the transition that you notice? You see the almost the setting, setting is the same, scene is the same, there is no figure as such, but there is only certain uh, changes and that is very little changes. So, how do you see? Here you see the same planet, the same planet, the same planet. What is the what is the transition that we notice? Initially it was not zoomed properly, now zoom, right? It has been zoom bit and now it is had taken a close up, right? That is the only transition that we see. So, only transition that we notice, right? Look at the third pick, what we interestingly find that a boy is sleeping and the mosquito is approaching to him, right? So, when mosquito is approaching to him, what is the little transition that we notice? Here you see the distance, right? Here you see the distance is less in this peak and here it is larger, right? So, the only transition is that it has moved bit closer, it has that, that mosquito has reached move bit closer to that boy who is sleeping. So, here what with this example, what I want to uh, explain to you is that this is the first panel that is called the moment to moment panel, which requires little closer. Look at the second, what happens here, where transition features a single subject in distinct action to action progression, right. So, in this what interestingly you find that the figure is the same, everything is almost the same, but the transition is in terms of action, right. So, only in terms of action we see, uh, uh, we see uh, transition and interestingly, what does also it talks about uh, uh, action to action, it gives us, it gives us a sense of causality, right. It gives us a sense of causality, I am sure that you are familiar with the theme or the idea of a causality which means cause and effect, right. For every effect there is a cause, right. Without cause there is no effect, right. So, I mean uh, that is how it goes the idea of a causality, but the interesting part is what I wanted to bring before you is this that it is showing two kind of action, something called a priori, right, something has happened before or posteriori, right. But most of the time the panel or the comic artist talks about a priori, not about the posteriori, but it does not mean there is uh, no such cases, there are, but uh, there are very few cases that talks about the posteriori. So, all right, moving to this panel, let me uh, uh, talk about this panel, so that you can understand more closely. You see, this is a two panel, where the person is the same, right. What happens in the first one? In the first one, you see, this is something ball, right, and this is a man, standing with the bat. Let us say for example, if I do not show you this one right. Let us say for example, there is this panel is not before you and if I say make a sense of this panel, I am sure that you will get confused that whether the ball is approaching to him or he has already hit the ball, right. So, you are not sure about it, right, whether the ball is coming closer to him or ball is going far from him. So, you, you cannot make a sense, but the moment you see the second panel, now you understood very clearly that, sir, in the first panel, what we see the ball is coming closer because you see the second panel, the second panel explains the first panel. There is no such meaning in the first panel until and unless we have the second panel. So, second panel giving the meaning, giving the meaning to first panel right. So, here you see that is how it happens. 
So, now you got to know that he has hit the ball that is it you understood. Moving to the second seen here what is happening you see there is a wine is being poured in the glass he is going to sip and then what you see in this the third one you have to make a guess you have to sense it a comic artist is not going to tell you what is happening you will make a sense that he has already had it right he already had it so here you see there is no verbal enunciation that is what i was talking about that it is not required that every time comic has to write something here that he is going to sing right he is going to have a cup of wine that is not there but what you interestingly see here is that it's making sense you don't need it you don't need anything anything in writing you don't need anything printed here you just see the images you make sense out of it that he already had it and that is why he's burping right after having a cup of wine he is burping and that is the sense you you can't say that he is burping without having a wine right if i ask you that why is he burping you're going to say sir because he had a wine that is why he's burping no one can come and say that he did not have it however is burping that's not true right so if you look at these three this is nothing it talks about action one action happening here another action happening here and another action happening here and as an audience or as a reader our job is that we should make a sense of these panels moving to the third one here what happens you see this is a car right remember this images uh, I am showing these images to you because you can remember these images because after a few lectures there is a possibility that I have to convey some other meaning to you then I will uh, give you the help I will give you uh, these uh, uh, examples and you have to make sense. So, let us say what is happening here this is the car right you did not see anything happening right and this crashed right here you see this crash so you got to know oh my god this is the same car who got crashed right now where is the action happening action happens here right so therefore gutter is something given to you so that you can fill the meaning meaning will be created by you it's not artist now you see interestingly i mean i don't want to get into reader response theory what happens in the reader response theory that text is given to you and we think our author is absent he is not there obviously this uh, transition happened after post textualism and we are one as an audience or as a reader why i am constantly saying audience because not always that it is shown to you sometimes if you are hearing impaired it will be shown to you right so I am uh, very sensitive in terms of disability. So, therefore, I constantly use as much as I can. So, the point what I am making is this that here you see the, who is filling up the meaning. It is not the comic artist is giving you everything. As a reader, we are getting in the process with the comic artist. So, we are also creating meaning. It is not only the author, it is not only the artist who is giving meaning to us. It is also we who fill the gap, who give the meaning. Let us say for example, if we are bamboozled, we do not know what does it mean. So, obviously, artist will be, will be helpless to explain to you. So, what is happening in these three slides, what is, it is filled with meaning by reader, right? Not by artist, artist is presuming that you will fill this kind of a meaning. So, here you see, you and author, both are in sync with each other you both have come together to give meaning to the particular text that you are reading. So, this is what MacLeod is saying action to action. Now, moving to the next slide that is subject to subject right. What is happening in subject to subject which takes us from subject to subject while saying while staying within a scene or idea note the degree of reader involvement necessary to render this transition 
meaningful. So, one thing that I want to uh, make clear to my students that any text that when you are reading either it is a drama or novel in fact anything you are watching a movie, you are uh, uh, going to interact with someone or you are going to read comics anything that you are doing in your life your involvement is very very important. So, until and unless you are involved meaning will not be generated. First condition for any particular text for any particular text how the meaning is possible, how meaning will be generated it is only when you are getting indulged with your proper critical mind and creative mind then only it will happen. So, when we are reading these panels so let us say for example, subject to subject what happens? What would happen that we have to stay within a scene or idea? So, let me take you to the slide I will explain to you how does it happen right subject to subject. So, so, if you look at the slide what interestingly you find on the slide. So, we are going to look at our slides where we are going to find that how we are uh, going to generate a meaning. So, if you look at these uh, panels there are three panel given to you right. So, there are uh, strips are given to you there are two panels, three panels, two panels. So, you see here now you die right you read this now you die he is saying no, 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 no right and then in the second panel you got to know that he died. How did you get to know? Remember we have already discussed Eisner's argument where he also talks about littering is very important. You see the kind of littering now here you can uh, make a sense this font, this size, this font, this size, this font, this size are not the same right. So, because this pick may be graphically they do not want to show the violence possibly they want to hide it the violence it will be so visual therefore, what they did they used this panel and this help of littering and made a sense now you got to know that this subject is died. So, here also interestingly this subject is present right and here also this subject is present sorry 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 my spelling mistake. So, this subject is present in absentia that is a paradox you know now you understood right here also he is present, but he is not living he has died. So, here you see that there is a voice of screaming however, we do not see, but we understand that he is very much present here. So, this is a subject to subject moving to the next uh, uh, trips what do you see here? You see that here what more could go wrong? Look at carefully I am just introducing how to read a comics. What more could go wrong? Then there is a response in the second panel you have to fill the guitar well at least Jerry never called and immediately you see in the third panel there is a ring right the phone is ringing and now I am sure that you are not going to say that who, like what this subject will think this subject will immediately think it is a Jerry's call right when you both are talking to each other and suddenly some phone rings and you are talking about that person then you, you immediately take note of it you immediately take note of it that it is someone's phone right. So, what is this three uh, strips that you notice here in these three panels in a one strip is this that it is talking about that how it is ringing the phone is about to ring. So, which means that it is not it is silent, but it is not silent it is speaking to you you are giving meaning to it and therefore, your involvement with the text is extremely significant in the same fashion when the slides when you see the third strip where you see that there is a boy who is uh, uh, running and then in the second panel you see there is a uh, watch which is showing the time and it is a click. So, which means you got to know that he won within the particular time period he won. So, here you see that how this kind of a transition it is shown from subject to subject. So, now moving to the next slide where we are going to talk about scene to scene 
uh, which transports us from uh, which transports us across significant distance of a time and a space all right so what interestingly we find in the scene to scene is uh, that uh, uh, it is trying to condense time and space so what happened my dear students when we are reading these panels i has i have already talked about it that time and space these are two important concepts so whenever we are reading comics we have to keep in the mind that talks about the time and talks about the space right so in these three uh, uh, panels so in these uh, certain strips where certain panels are arranged what interestingly talks about that how the story is moving so let's say for example that i have to show london paris and new york at the same time it's not possible for me so what i'll do i'll take the help of one type of a panel that is called scene to scene where i can talk about it so let me show you the slide and explain for you beautifully so here come to the slide here what you have what you see in the first strip is this that you see uh, on the strip he cannot overrun us forever right he cannot overturn us forever and then the second strip sorry the second panel what you see 10 years later so that is interestingly find that there is a policeman who has who is saying that he cannot overrun us forever which means that there will be a point of time when we are going to catch him but interestingly what you notice that in the second panel is showing that 10 years later so that's a kind of irony you know that 10 years have passed and he is not able to catch the thief so this is a kind of irony is shown to you which means one scene that was a one particular scene in one particular scene it was shown that the that police is trying to catch a thief but in the second scene it is showing that 10 years have passed they are not able to catch it so the point is that you see that that time is so condensed and in the second uh, strips what do you see that there is a boy looks like more or less the same but the point is not that it is the same figure or not the point is that one panel is talking about Bombay another panel is talking about the Paris and another panel is talking about the New York so here you see space is condensed in one particular strip in three different panels three cities are shown to you right so that is how through the help of a panel one particular scene to moving from and the scene can be shown so let's go to the slide please and understand this more carefully so now you see the slide what happens here is that see he cannot overrun us forever and then 10 years later so this is the irony basically that he is not able to catch a thief and then here you see this is a bombay this is a paris this is a new york so if possibly they want to show that maybe a lifestyle in three different cities or whatever right keep how they are living something but it's all about that three cities are brought together and then we have a third one where it is talking about that no one could have survived that crash right no one could have survived that crash and then sniff like she is sniffing she is crying right and she is all let's say she is, she, is, she is not in the good mood and then you are right and then immediately which is uh, uh, meanwhile it is uh, saying that uh, there is a you could see that there is a boy maybe uh, uh, he is sitting somewhere and he is crying or he is not happy but they both or the both panels are talking about something bad right so it is more talking about something that crash has taken place so this is something called labeling which I wanted to tell you all that this is meanwhile this is the way which is uh, this is the way to express or moving from one scene to another and this is called labeling right so there is not you see this is not a speech balloon right there is no speech balloon there is no t h o u g s t b a thought balloon there is no speech balloon no thought balloon right in the both fix you see it's not there 
but as an audience or as a reader, as a student, we can immediately guess that what is happening in these both scenes. On the basis of scene, what happens time and space, they both change, right. So, this is a time, this is a space, right, they both change. So, this is what happens in the scene to scene. Now, moving to the next slide, what you interestingly find in the next slide is aspect to aspect, right, the aspect to aspect panel. So, which bypasses time for the most part and sets a wandering eye on a different aspects of a place, idea or mood, right. So, what happens here over there in the aspect to aspect, if you see that this is a basically you can immediately see it's a Christmas, right, or this is a, a basically a, uh, what happens that I am sure that uh, as a student of literature you must be knowing about the haikus where images are brought together, right. So, this is nothing in the both the scenes here, here and here this is showing something jovial uh, taking place, right. In this also you see there is the, they, they had uh, maybe beer, they smoke and now they are having a party or something they are doing. So, this is a second kind of type of a panel which is aspect to aspects in which it is so it is it is talking about that how uh, this chap like bypasses time for the most part and sets a wandering eye on different aspects of a place idea or mood. So, so, what I am trying to suggest one and convey with this uh, help of these panels that how beautifully artists try to convey a kind of a sense or a kind of a storytelling, but to tell a storytelling or, or to form a storytelling or tell you something important what kind of medium they are going to choose and if they are going to choose medium called comics, how how particular, how importantly they are going to focus on particular uh, uh, let us say shapes or let us say size, which means in a different words, how form is more significant and important. So, my dear students when as a student when we are reading these comics, our job is also to scrutinize, to look at critically how these forms are arranged by the artist. All right, dear students and friends, see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.